Welcome to today's video, which is actually going to be a little bit of a random one. I just sort of sat down and decided to film it. I'm going to go through the winners of the Allure Best of Beauty Awards. I haven't looked at the list, so this is me going straight into it kind of blindly. And I'm just going to give you my thoughts on the winners, if I've tried the products, if I'm a bit surprised to see who's won. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is even going to be an interesting video. I might not even post it, but let me know in the comments if I do end up posting it, what you think of the winners. Um, yeah, so let's get straight into it. And I will throw up on screen the products that I'm talking about and the category winners so we can Run through it together. So I'm just loading the website and I've got my iPad here so I'm going to be looking down a bit I think. I've got an owl right outside this window so if you can hear like a weird background noise it's just the owl living its best life or maybe it's a frog I can't even tell. <laughs> now it looks like they've got a bunch of categories here so I'm probably just going to stick to skincare maybe body I'll see. 357 winners so obviously they've done a lot of voting um, but I think the little allure red stick has become pretty well known in the beauty industry so it's quite an honor I would assume for brands to win. Their little description here says there are over 47 million skincare products on the market which is a mind-blowing number um, and apparently they've got 41 winners in this category so let's start. So the first one here is the best LED skin device and it looks like TheraBody TheraFace Mask one which I feel like I've been across LED mask releases. I've been looking at the current body one, Omnilux and those brands. I did not know that TheraBody had an LED mask. So this is one that I'm going to have to look, look into myself. The shape of it looks quite interesting and that's always a selling point if I'm not seeing replication of design. So yeah, no real thoughts, but definitely one that I'm looking at. The price here is marked at $5.99 USD, which seems to be on the higher end of pricing, but I feel like TheraBody is a bit of a ripoff brand overall. Next up, we've got the best antioxidant protection serum. Sorry, the last bit of the category category title um, isn't displayed properly, but we've got the Dr. Dennis Gross Vitamin C Lactic 15% Firm and Bright Serum. This one I haven't used either. It's labeled here as uh, $85 USD, only because vitamin C, only because my skin is a little bit finicky with vitamin C. So I'm not usually like willing to try that many because it tends to freak out quickly. I think Dr. Dennis Gross is a good brand. I'm using their, I think it's their fill and repair line at the moment. They're just a little bit pricey. I think um, there are probably brands offering better stability, maybe better research in their actual formula that's around, but no real thoughts. I think this is probably a good product. I feel like this video is already becoming a flop because I haven't tried anything and I can see the next category is best peel. And the winner here was the Shani Darden Triple Acid Signature Peel. And I'm fairly confident Shani is a well-known esthetician. I'm pretty sure I've seen her in mixed makeup videos on Susan Yara's channel. This seems to be a peel kit that comes with a brush and I guess individual individually packed masks. Um, it's 125 US USD, which is on the steep side. Um, this is the kind of product that I probably have no need for. I use Lucian P50 from Biologic Recherche regularly, so there's really no need to supplement an, an exfoliating acid with a dedicated peel system. But I think if you're the type of person that doesn't use acids regularly and you just sort of use them situationally once or twice a year as a grouping, then maybe this makes sense. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit on the pricey side again, which seems to be the running theme of these Allure winners so far. Next up is the Best Brightening Eye Cream. And the winner of this category is the Lancome Renergy, Renergy, <laughs> Renergy um, HCF Triple Serum Eye. I also haven't used this one, but I have used the regular face serum version. I can see why this would win in the brightening eye cream because the face serum version is super, super high in pigment. So it definitely has like a makeup effect on the skin where um, like a tone up effect that you might see in Korean beauty. Uh, although I haven't looked at the ink here of, of this, I'm just going to assume this is pretty filled with pigment components as well. That gives the illusion of a brightening effect on the eye area. Next up is the best tinted sunscreen. And the winner here is Super Goop. 
Protect Tint Daily Skin Tint SPF 50. This one is 44 USD and I'm always surprised to see pricing on American sunscreens. They're so high and I don't understand why. On the plus side, this is an SPF 50, which also doesn't seem to be that common in US brands. Obviously being Australian, there's absolutely no need for me to shop US sunscreen, but um, I think it's nice to see tinted options with this level of SPF. I'm just hoping that the tint is fairly translucent so people feel comfortable comfortable building it up or using the proper amount of sunscreen because you don't want to just dab a little to achieve the tint because then you're not really getting full protection. Next up is the best pimple patches category and the winner here is Hero Cosmetics Mighty Patch Original. Um, I went through a phase with pimple patches but ultimately decided they really don't do anything except for preventing me from scratching which isn't historically a problem that I have. Um, I don't actually think they help with the actual healing of pimples any more than normal. I way prefer using spot treatments. My favorite is the Dr. Sam Bunting Neutralizing Gel. Next up is the best cleanser for acne and the winner here is the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Wash. I don't think we have this available in Australia but I have actually ordered it from the US to try and I think this is a really awesome cleanser. I'm not a fan of CeraVe overall. To me, they're extremely overrated. And I think if they didn't have the budget to pay dermatologists to sell their product, they probably wouldn't have the standing that they do. But this product is an exception. They've designed it really well. And if you need benzoyl peroxide, this is an awesome cleanser to try. Next up is the best balm moisturizer and the winner here is the Aven Sickle Fate. Um, I don't know, maybe a controversial winner considering Sika Plus seems to be the favorite on social media. I think this is a good product, totally a totally worthy winner. I'm just pretty sure the pricing in the US for Aven again is a little bit out of control. I'm gonna just check what it costs in Australia and also in Europe um, because charging 30 plus dollars for Sickle Fate, which is ultimately a very, very basic cream um i'm not sure i'm not sure that makes sense but you know it's a good product so if you love it live your best life so that was the list of all of the skincare on like the main page i've just clicked into their shop all winners list so i hope this has the rest of the categories in there so next up we've got the best gel facial cleanser category which has gone to dr loretta gentle hydrating cleanser and this is another one that i haven't tried I'm just gonna quickly see if I can find some information on it just to chat about it a little bit more. Um, this link is not currently active. Okay, so the texture looks like a pretty classic gel. Um, ingredients wise, it seems to also read quite basic. So, um, you know, $40 USD is probably a fair-ish price. You know, obviously there's a bit of a markup because of the doctor title. I don't know, I've been using the Do Skin Bapti Baptism Cleanser, which has a little bit more of a thick sort of texture to it so this is fine i'm sure this is fine but i just i don't see anything here that would like move me to purchase it next up is the best cream facial cleanser which has gone to the mac hyper real cream to foam cleanser now this is a bit of a cheat i think because a cream to foam isn't really a cream cleanser it's actually a foam cleanser so um, I don't think this one should have won just on the principle of it not being actually a cream cleanser. Um, so that's a bit disappointing. There are actually tons of good quality cream, proper cream cleansers on the market. Um, I have used this cleanser, personally found it a little bit too stripping and drying, so I would not recommend it to anybody. Um, sorry. <laughs> Next is the best oil facial cleanser, which has gone to Peach and Lily Ginger Melt Oil Cleanser. I don't like this product at all. It has a much richer texture than I'm used to or prefer in oils. And I find this leaves a lot of residue that's really difficult to rinse away. So also do not like, do not recommend this cleanser. Next up is the best mousse facial cleanser. Wow, so they're really going into textural detail here. Uh, the winner for this category was the Clinique Take the Day Off Facial Cleansing Mousse. I actually have this in my shower because I hated using it on my face. I also found it extremely drying. Texturally, it's not that different from the MAC because it starts off as almost like a shaving foam texture and then develops into like an actual lather. Um, I've used it as a shaving cream instead. I keep it in the shower as a bit of a body wash, but I find it way too drying, so also would not actually recommend this product to anybody. <laughs> Next up is the best cleansing balm, which has gone to the Desi Skin Skin So Balm. This was an okay cleansing balm. I also found that it left too much residue and I had a bit of a hassle rinsing it off. So 
certainly definitely not a bad product just not one that i think is exceptional or that i think should have an allure award-winning stamp next up is the best traditional facial scrub and this has gone to the outset exfoliating caffeine micro polish which is scar joe's brand this is amazing. I love this product and I was surprised when I got it because I used a few of the other products in this brand. The rest of the line I think is pretty like basic, probably overpriced, but this exfoliating gel has super fine particles in it so you can roll across your skin really easily um, and it's not scratchy but super effective and I love this product so they nailed it. Best exfoliating powder is the next category and that's gone to Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant. At this point this is a bit of a cult favorite, long-standing favorite type product. Um, I don't love the squeaky clean feeling that these that these powders leave on my skin. So I'm personally not a big fan. And if I were to choose an exfoliating type powder, I would actually go with the toucher options. They're much gentler and just feel much nicer on the skin. Next up is the best exfoliating toner, which is the Edom Cashmere Peel Gentle Exfoli Exfoliating AHA Toner. I spoke about this recently, but there's no planet where this would be considered actually exfoliating. It's super, super, super gentle. So maybe if you have extremely delicate skin you'll love it i know they market it towards like skin of color i think is the phrasing they use but um even so i think this would be too gentle for most people and it ends up having more of a moisturizing effect than it does an exfoliating impact so again i don't understand why this would win an exfoliating category when it barely exfoliates next up is the best facial mist and codely beauty elixir has won um i think this product is garbage <laughs> like actual trash but having said that, Caudalie make their grape water, which is like the water in the spray. And I think that's awesome. So this particular product, Trash, it's just like essentially fragrance in a water bottle. Um, not that I hate fragrance, but it's just completely useless. The grape water, though, for some reason, ends up having a really like soothing effect on my skin. So that one I love. The winner I hate. Next up is Best Essence and Road Glazing Milk has won. I haven't tried this one. It has definitely been on my like would love to buy list. Just Road doesn't ship to Australia, which is a little bit annoying. I suspect it would be a little bit too rich for me as well. So it just looks a bit too moisturizing, a little bit too nourishing. Um, but you never know until you try. Instead, I've been using the Violet FR Boom Boom, which I think would probably be a more universal texture. Um, and I kind of think I want this only because of the whole fear of missing out thing, but not that I actually love using it myself. Next up is the best soothing serum, and that's gone to the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Rescue Solution. I actually think this is a good product, so I understand why it would win in the category. It's not like exceptionally soothing, but I think it works better than the regular Advanced Night Repair Serum. Um, I haven't had this in my routine for a few months, and I kind of think I miss it. I was using it in the Essence step so maybe during black friday i'll have a look at rebuying it again best hydrating serum we have shiny darden again and the skin moisture boost plumping serum this is another one i haven't used but um it's 78 usd and i think that's probably pushing it on price for a hydration serum um i might just look it up properly to see if there's anything special yeah look for 78 usd i really can't see anything that would stand out or make this an exceptionally like good hydrating serum waterproof and diopentylene glycoglycerin and panthenol you know these are all fairly standard cost effective hydration ingredients so um yeah i don't really get it again nothing here would propel me to spend that money on a hydrating serum unless you're maybe brand loyal you love the packaging all of that stuff matters but just as a isolated product i don't see how this would i don't see why this would be worth the price next up is the best line smoothing serum and the winner is kate somerville kate Suticool supercell rejuvenation serum this one is 95 dollars, and it has the little rollerball action on there you know at least the delivery method of the actual rollerball is a little bit unique so I'm sure that has maybe a depuffing quality to it again there's nothing in here that would make me want to spend this money on this serum it just seems to be the case where if it's like an esthetician brand if it's a doctor brand or if it's a luxury brand you're just sort of paying money because of the name behind it which you know that's just the way of the world for everything so that's neither here or there but just specifically this product it's not really doing anything extra to make it worth its price in my opinion that was a lot of ranting <laughs> 
Next up is the best light facial moisturizer, which has gone to the Astura, Astura Atto Barrier 365 Ceramide Lotion, which I'm pretty sure is a K-Beauty brand. This is 32 USD for a fairly large size. Um, I feel like this would probably be more of a body moisturizer for me personally. I mean, this seems to be a pretty good quality moisturizer. I've used one of their products. I don't know if it was the, um, I don't know if they, I don't know if it was the lotion or if they make a regular moisturizer. I just sort of felt like it was a bit like using CeraVe and I didn't notice anything particularly standout or special with it. But again, no complaints. This seems to be a pretty decent product. Next up is the best rich facial moisturizer, which is the matter of fact, maximalist age defying moisturizer. This has some brightening ingredients, bakuchiol and peptides in it. Um, 72 USD again is probably at a point that I would not be comfortable paying for a moisturizer like this. If you followed my channel, you'll know that I do buy luxury skincare brands. It's just in those cases, I know they're luxury brands. So I'm not under some sort of illusion that, you know, the markup or whatever is for any other reason than them being the brand. For me, branding does have value. So like if I'm buying Chanel, part of that is because of the heritage of the brand and, you know, the packaging and the fragrances and all of that. For a very stock standard Sephora brand, there's really nothing that would attract me to that unless they were creating a blend or something that was super unique or a texture that's super unique. Matter of fact, I would not put in that category. So if this was priced half of what they're charging, then sure. But at 72 USD for a relatively unknown brand without much standing, that's definitely something that I would not go for. We've done the best balm moisturizer, which was the Aven Sickle Fate, Sickle Fate. Best facial oil has gone to Bloom Effects Royal Tulip Vitamin C facial oil, 85 USD. I haven't explored much of Bloom Effects, but I know it's quite popular on social media. Again, 85, kind of expensive. It contains THD ascorbate. I mean, I guess the nice thing about this oil is that it's a proper blend, um, and I guess they're using other ingredient extracts, so it ends up being a little bit more of a serum oil. So, you know, this makes a little bit more sense to me. Typically, I don't love the idea of like vitamin C in an oil format, so that would be the only reason I'd pass on this. But maybe if you just enjoy an oil texture, then that would make sense. Next up is the best line smooth eye cream which has gone to the Neocutis, Neocutis, Neocutis Lumiere Firm. I'm pretty sure this is a bit of a cult favorite product in like SD circles. Um, 114 USD is on the high end side. Eye creams is a category that I really enjoy exploring and I've been known to sort of splurge a little bit in this category. But again, just like looking into it, there's really nothing here that sounds that special. Um, it's definitely a decent ingredient blend, but just nothing like jumps out that would make me want to you know, buy. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know how old this formula is, but I don't know. It kind of reads maybe a little bit like it was made a while ago. So yes, these days, I think for this money, you can probably get a more comprehensive formulation. Like at the moment, I think something along similar lines, along similar lines would be the Cypher Skincare, the Anomaly which has a lighter kind of serum texture. Um, so I would definitely prefer using something like that over this product. You know, obviously Allure is an American magazine, so these products are very American focused. Some of these brands aren't even sold in Australia, so I have limited experience with them. Although I try to ensure that I'm covering and using brands from all around the world. Sometimes that makes me think these publications are actually missing out on good quality products because they're just laser focused on what's sold, you know, in Sephora stores or um, like Derm store and, you know, those sorts of places. So it can't really be a best list because the pool of products is maybe a little bit too limited. Next up is the best de-puffing eye cream, which is the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Eye Treatment. Um, yeah, probs not. I have a bit of a personal beef with this brand because they were, they push a lot of drug claims around acne treatments and there was an issue with them using a dapanoid, kind of passing it off as a dapaline. Anyway, a whole thing. So I, I don't vibe this brand at all. 
Um, so I don't have any thoughts on the product because I just wouldn't use it. Best clarifying mask has gone to the Caudalie Instant Detox mask. I haven't used this one. Um, I've had it in and out of my car a hundred times because it's been on social media as like a popular mask option. Um, so maybe I'll have to try it one day. It's, you know, relatively affordable. So um, yeah, I might have to pick that up one day soon. Next, we have the best hydrating mask from Blue Lagoon Skincare and they label it a mineral mask. This one I haven't heard of, but it looks kind of interesting. Look, honestly, again, just reading the description, nothing really stands out. So not one that I would gravitate towards naturally. Um, yeah, so pass. <laughs> Next up is the best overnight mask. So I guess like a sleeping cream. Uh, this has gone to the Rene Rouleau, Rene Rouleau uh, Rest Day Mask. I'm pretty sure I've heard of this brand a lot through some of the cast members on Riverdale. Um, I've wanted to try this brand. The Rene Rouleau sounds like a very thoughtful esthetician that like considers her product products a lot. So definitely a brand I'd like to explore, but I think just her distribution is a little bit limited. Um, and last time I checked, I, I'm having a flashback that the shipping to Australia was astronomical. So um, I'm not sure, we'll see again, maybe one to keep my eye on for Black Friday. Next up is the best brightening mask, which is the Hyper Even Fade and Glow AHA mask. I haven't tried this one, but AHA masks are again something I don't reach for too regularly because I use Lotion P50, so no real thoughts. Um, Honestly, it reads a little bit basic, so again, I can't see anything too special here. Best chemical gel sunscreen is the next category. So they are getting very specific, they're very specific. Tula Skincare Protect Plus. Tula Skincare Protect and Glow Daily Sunscreen SPF 30. Um, we don't have this product in Australia, I guess, because of TGA rules. Um, SPF 30 is not really my thing. I think there are too many good, well done SPF 50 products. So I personally don't even mess around with SPF 30 anymore. But again, the best sunscreen is the one that you want to use daily. So if you love it, you apply enough of it, awesome. 38 USD again is very uh, is a very high price though. And I think that's probably unreasonable for sunscreen, but again, if it's within budget, great. Next is the best chemical lotion sunscreen that's gone to Crave Beauty Beat the Sun SPF 40. This one is $20 USD. So that makes a lot more sense for regular application. I haven't tried this one specifically, but I know this will have a little bit more of like a glowy skin look. And that's the only reason I've avoided trying it. Um, just cause I prefer more matte leaning sunscreens, but at least the price point on this and SPF 40 is decent coverage. So Yes, great. Best glowy mineral sunscreen has gone to Kate Somerville Hydrocate Illuminating SPF 50 Drops. 46 USD, like calm yourselves down with this pricing on sunscreen. Um, illuminating are words that I do not resonate with. So this is an easy, definitely not for me. Um, and again, I just couldn't, I can't envision spending this much on sunscreen monthly. That's just loopy. Uh, next up, is the best matte mineral sunscreen, which has gone to La Roche-Posay and Thelios mineral sunscreen. And this is an SPF 50 plus, um, 36 USD is a much better price point. Um, although still kind of high, but especially just considering K-Beauty and all of that is such reasonable pricing. But I think La Roche-Posay is a well-trusted brand for sunscreen formulation. So again, if you love this one, if you love the texture, that totally makes sense. We've already discussed best facial cleanser. For acne which was the CeraVe. Um, best all over acne treatment has gone to different gel so hallelujah like finally a product that is affordable and totally functional um, so thrilled to see this one win because it 100% would be the best treatment possible over the counter for acne and then next up is the best spot treatment which is also by different and this is a 10% benzoyl peroxide benzoyl peroxide acne spot treatment. Also awesome choice. So benzoyl peroxide totally makes sense as an acne treatment. Um, and actually the, their whole acne category they've nailed. So CeraVe, Wash, Differin Gel, benzoyl peroxide spot treatment, tick, tick, tick. So finally, and like that whole routine is probably going to cost less than just one of the serums from one of the other random categories. So I'm glad that at least when we're talking a medical condition, some of these winners 
there's uh, sensible choices. Best razor for face is the tweezer and facial razor. Okay, great. Best hair removing device is the flawless finishing, finishing touch face. Haven't used it. Okay, moving on. Best cleansing device is the Michael Todd Beauty Sonic Clear Sonic Facial Cleansing Brush, which looks exactly like, um, what, what was the name? Sonic? Clarisonic. Um, yeah, I didn't understand those then. I don't understand this now. So easy pass for me anyway. Best humidifier is the Canopy Portable Humidifier. Um, look, I don't know that many people would actually realistically need a humidifier in their home regularly. I think if you do, you probably know. Um, so no real thoughts on that because I'm sure having a little portable one is super handy, but just probably not needed for most people. Best skin lifting device has gone to the New Face Trinity Plus. I really, really tried to get into these devices, but it just can't be bothered. The results are so temporary. You need to use it so regularly. Like just, I don't have time for that. Um, and then it looks like they're finishing off with the best LED mask, which we discussed at the start. And that was the TheraBody face mask. So that is all of the skincare categories that I can see here. This video is already looking like it's about half an hour. So I probably won't go through the other categories today. I'm just quickly having a look at some of the other categories in case there's something else I want to discuss um you know a lot of it is makeup and hair which definitely isn't my lane like base products there's some body here but they're just all yeah they're just all American products that we don't really get in Australia so I can't comment uh oh I didn't know Necessaire makes a body bar I'd love to use that that's a great brand yeah so there's no real point me commenting on the rest of this stuff because it's a little bit too American focused but let me know in the comments if you agree disagree if you have any questions again I don't know if this was super stupid to film but sometimes I just enjoy watching rambling videos myself so here is one from me to you um thank you very much for hanging out with me today don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video